So yes, uh, in the last class we were discussing about uh, Finnish's uh, objective goods. I tried to explain to you what objective goods are. Objective goods, just so that you remember. Okay, these are the questions that you will be asked here and there. Objective goods are, you know, goods. Okay, they are goods. They are not something that is morally good because moral question comes later. Objective goods are indemonstrable. I cannot prove about their objectivity to you. You have to take them to be given. Okay, uh, any reasonable person will accept them to be true. Okay. Um, uh, and they are intuitive, you, in, I mean in the sense that you know if, that you know they are true unless you are unreasonable, okay. So that's what objective goods in generally are, okay. Objective goods cannot be broken down into anything more, you know, simple. So you start with it, okay. So um, they are basically subatomic particles in the moral world, okay, in the world of practical reasoning, okay. You cannot break them down any further, okay? you start with them. Uh, and uh, uh, we have identified seven different objective goods, okay? And one of them is very important, all of them are important. One of them is also important for us to come to right conclusions about the projects, the decisions, the actions that we take in life. And what is that? What is Practical that? Practical reasonability. Yes, Practical yes. Practical reasonability. Yes, yes. Sumit, keep your video on. What happened to your video? Keep your video on. Yes, uh, so yes, good answer, practical reasonableness. So what else did we discuss about practical reasonableness yesterday? What else did we discuss about practical reasonableness yesterday? Can you recollect? It was only yesterday we discussed this. Wait a second, I have noted it down. There, there, are, there are nine requirements of practical reasonableness, if you remember, okay. So, what, what do we do with those nine requirements of practical reasonableness? So, that uh, consequence and, uh, consequentialism, ontology, virtue, ethics, eudaimonia. No, 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 not those, not those, not those. We discussed about nine pra rules of practical reasonableness that, uh, you know, yesterday, if you remember. Do you remember? No, sir. No, sir. Uh, yesterday, I tried to explain to you uh, by giving examples about a project in jurisprudence. If you remember, do you remember? Uh, now? Is it that uh, uh, absence of arbitrary preference? Yes, 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 of, yes. You guys are going the right direction. Yes. Detachment yes. of current of current plan of life. Yes, 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 you're, you're, you're in the right direction. So I gave you nine different, you know, principles of practical reasonableness, if you remember, okay. So you start with coherent plan of life, absence of arbitrary preference, then uh, among values, uh, among persons, detachment, commitment, efficiency, respect for all basic value, common good, and ultimately, the last one was following your conscience, okay. So these were the nine uh, principles of, you know, practical reasonableness that we discussed in the last class, okay. So what, what the hell do we do with those, you know, nine requirements? So essentially what uh, this fellow, you know, philosopher says is that you, you are to come to certain conclusions about what you ought to do or not ought to do in your life, okay? How do you come to those conclusions from the objective goods? You can do it by applying these practical principles of practical reasonableness to those objective goods, okay? And that's how you do practical you know, reasoning, uh, uh, you know, in your life. So this is what we have discussed so far, okay. Um, yes, now one, one more thing that I remember, I recollect having discussed yesterday is, the problem is that all these objective goods that he is talking about seems to be self-referential. They are all referring to me, okay. The problem that remains is, those problems that we have in this society is not and mostly about not me okay it's only about when i have to you know coexist with others okay i have to exist with others so uh, essentially the question of altruism okay when you extend benevolence to others okay so what reason do i have to be nice to others okay to do good to others why should i not be selfish okay maybe being selfish maybe thinking about only my own well-being uh, 
you know, is better than thinking about others. But that's not what we see. We see people who are willing to lay down their lives in the war for a particular community. You, uh, you may be willing to lay down your lives, okay, for your parents, for your brother, sister, for the, uh, for your, you know, mem for the members of your community, okay. Now, we can have many explanations for this phenomenon, okay, that why people, you know, look beyond their own selves, okay. You can, you can have scientific explanation for that, that, you know, the obvious reason, you know, your parents prefer your well-being is that they have an interest in continuing themselves through your genes, okay, through the, you, you con they continue their gene pool, okay, through you. So you have evolutionary explanation for that, okay. So, and then you also love your, you know, for example, you love your brother probably more than, there is a tendency there that you love your, essentially the case, I'm not generalizing, that you like your brother, sisters more than you like your cousin, okay. Your parents would definitely prefer you over, you know, their niece, okay, uh, or nephews, okay, whatever. So we have biological explanation for that. But, you know, John Finney is not doing that, okay. That we cannot possibly be doing, uh, uh, giving an explanation for altruism through biological, you know, uh, 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 through a biological explanation. That That is not sufficient for us, okay. The problem with that is that in many other cases, we will still be driven by certain selfish motives that I will care only for my children and not about others, okay? So what reason will I still have to extend, you know, benevolence uh, to be altruistic towards others, okay? So you have one philosophy known as consequentialism, okay? Consequentialism might give you reasons to extend, you know, you, you know your, your being nice to others, okay? But Finnis will not be cool with that either, okay? Because consequentialism might also lead you to come to a different conclusion. It might also lead you to come to a conclusion that, okay, if, if in this instance I'm successful in killing someone, maybe I will get his property and I will never get caught. So it only increases my happiness at the cost of someone else's, okay? So it seems that in this silly example that I just tried to give you, that, okay, Consequential le consequentialism leads you to a con consequence where you, you are ready to sacrifice someone else's well-being for your own, okay? So Finnis will not be happy, Finnis will not be satisfied with consequentialist approach. Essentially, that's the criticism of consequentialism, that, okay, if we have 100 people in a particular community, uh, if we could maximize, okay, happiness of 90, okay, at the cost of 10, then the same thing is justified. A silly, you know, consequentialist calculation will might lead you to such a conclusion, okay? But here, what you are doing is, you are forgetting about those 10, okay? You are ready and willing to sacrifice interest of those 10, okay? So that's one of the problem that, you know, remains with consequentialism. Another name, so that you understand what consequentialism is, utilitarian calculation, okay? Hedonistic calculation. That's the problem of, with consequentialism, okay? So Finney's philosophy is not consequentialist in approach, okay? So this idea of, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know what, what you call objective good, okay? Uh, yesterday we were discussing about why should I not think about objective only in self-referential terms, in the sense that why should I not think about only my objective goods? Why should I extend those objective goods to others? So Finnis is saying that you do not extend objective goods to others for any consequentialist reason. But extending objective goods to others is one of the objective goods. And what is that? What is that? You remember seven, seven objective goods that we discussed, okay? One of the objective goods say that we extend the objective goods to others, okay? Which one is that? Sir, the, the uh, Sumit, 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 of, uh, Sumit, 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 wait, wait, let someone else try. It, sir, is it sociability? Yes, Vardhan, you said uh, sociability, Jairaz Nathari, sociability, anyone uh, else? Anyone else? One is very easy, one of the seven. If you look at them, you will know. Okay, anyone else? 
Just have a look at those, you know, seven uh, uh, basic goods. Which one do you think could be one? Sir, aesthetic. No. Okay. So no, the uh, altruism. Altruism. Altruism is not one of those, uh, you know, basic goods. If you see, what are those? What are those seven basic goods? Right. So stability of friendship. Yeah, so yeah, some of you gave the correct answer already. Okay, so it definitely is sociability. It definitely is, uh, you know, friendship. Okay, now he is saying that sociability, or in other words, the word, you know, friendship, is one of the basic goods that require you that you extend the basic goods also to others. Okay, that's it. Okay, so you do not extend it to others because the consequences will be good for you because that is not. He will be happy with because it could also lead you to other conclusion. Then you say that, okay, I will not extend these basic goods to others. So it cannot be that. It cannot be consequentialist. So he is saying that, yes, extending these basic goods to others in itself is a basic good. And which one is it? You rightly identified it as a sociability or friendship. Okay. So friendship is a basic good. Okay. Now, you, one might say that, why? Why can't, you know, this idea of sociability or friendship, be based on some consequentialist idea. Maybe if I'm friendly with others, the consequence is good, okay? But uh, our philosopher here will not accept that. He will not be content with that. He will say that anyone who befriends others, okay, just because he's, he is to gain something out of that friendship will live a very impoverished life, okay? It will be a very undesirable life according to him. Do you understand? Think about it in your own terms, okay? You make friends, okay? Do you make friends only because your friend will, you know, write the project for you or will, you know, bring you good food or you will derive some other kind of, you know, you know, <laughs> what should I say, some benefit from that friendship? No, sir. If you do, if you do, people do that as well. People do that as well. Okay. But then that will be a consequentialist reason. Okay. There is something that is lacking here according to finish okay so it cannot be that if you are doing that you are living a living an impoverished life okay but if you are doing it okay if you are being friendly with people because you think that being friendly okay bring, being you know friends with someone is an objective good then you are living a life which is worthwhile if you remember that's what we started with okay now I'm not talking about friend, friendship only in this sense of the term, okay? So when we live in a community and we extend our, you know, basic, these basic goods to others, what we are essentially doing is respecting one of these objective goods that is sociability, okay? So sociability in itself is an objective good that requires that you extend those objective goods to others, okay? So it's not for consequentialist or utilitarian reason that you extend, uh, you know, the objective goods to others okay so i hope this is clear is it clear so he is not an utilitarian he doesn't like being utilitarian he is not a consequentialist he is giving you objective reasons for extending these basic goods to others is that clear i hope this is clear say yes or no yes sir okay uh, so yes uh, that's there now um, we were also talking about uh, Common good, okay? The common good is very important for us, okay? What is common good? So you know that uh, there are like almost 60 of us here, okay? Each of us pursue one of those basic goods. Suppose, let's assume that we are pursuing uh, our own basic goods, okay? Quite often, while we pursue our basic goods, we will come in conflict, okay, with, you know, someone amongst us okay or many amongst us okay there is a high possibility because there are limited resources limited space we have to share the same world there is a very high likelihood that we come in conflict with one another okay so that's when we cannot be thinking only in terms of the basic goods okay we also have to extend basic goods to others okay so that's what the idea of common good is all about okay so common good is nothing but you extending those basic goods to others. But how do you do that? Because quite often there will be, you know, conflicts. Okay. So essentially what he will say here is that 
you have to essentially follow the same practical rules of you know practical reasonableness okay that in itself is a basic you know value or you know uh, common good okay and this requires a person to have regard to common good so when we talk about common good you are to basically keep in mind that while you pursue your own project okay you will not be discriminatory towards other you will be mindful of the fact that others are also pursuing their own projects in life so you have to limit your pursuing of particular project to the extent that it affects someone else's okay that's essentially is the idea of common good now common good is essentially the idea of altruism as we were talking about the question essentially boils down to this that why should i not be driven by only my own interest why should i think about interests of others okay he would say that because objective good one of the objective good requires that your principles of sociability okay requires that okay this objective good of sociability requires that you extend it to others okay and if you apply the principles of practical reasonableness in the way that he lays down you will come to the right conclusion about what's the right thing to do so that's the idea of common good okay it's essentially uh, making a balance between your self interests and the interests of others okay that's the idea of uh, common good but as you know i tried to explain to you a little while ago this is not a consequentialist uh, you know calculation the idea of common good is not against consequentialist uh, you know argument because okay he will not be happy with a uh, consequentialist uh, argument so if you look at the reading that i had shared okay you will see that it's written to the utilitarian the answer is simple utilitarian is a consequentialist so what would they say so to an utilitarian the common good is another name for ultimate moral taste test okay the greatest good of the greatest number when everything is considered okay but for sorry but for finis uh, it's not the greatest good of greatest numbers okay because even when we consider the greatest even when we consider the greatest number there is a possibility that there is a small number about which we are not concerned whose rights we can ignore okay finis will not be okay with that okay so that's why finis's approach to common good is not consequentialist but uh, based on common good based on the idea of objective good itself okay so i hope this is clear is it clear do you guys understand why common good is not based on consequentialist principle of yes, utility so okay that's good then i'm sorry i'm moving really fast because you know i do not have much time i have to start the next next part of this you know and next module so yes um, uh, within this discussion one thing that you have to keep in mind that in finis's uh, you know philosophy it's the individual who matters okay it's the individual who matters you cannot forget about the individual you do not sacrifice the rights interest of individual for the betterment of the community in consequentialist philosophy quite often that's what happens okay so finis says that the society the community exists for the well-being of individual and individual doesn't exist for the well-being of the society and if you consider individual as some someone who is dispensable for the well-being of the society that's not something that he will be happy with and his philosophy doesn't allow that so he comes up with this you know principle of subsidiarity okay so wh wh how does he describe that he says that the proper function of an association is to help the participants in the association in the association to help themselves so it's the responsibility of the community to help individual participants to help themselves so you see some similarity with amartya sen's idea of you know capability approach do you guys know his capability approach have you studied capability approach by amartya sen in political science have you been taught yet no yes also. no you, you have no sir no you haven't so you will be taught you then re remember when you are taught about capability approach just try and remember you know what finis is talking about and if there is any you know similarity between this and amartya sen amartya sen as well as martha nussbaum's capability approach 
So it essentially says that you have to help the individual to help themselves. Okay, you do not directly help them. You make them help themselves. So you you give them capacity to act, to do something. Okay, to be someone. Okay. So this is exactly what even Finnis is talking about. Okay, the principle of subsidiarity essentially refers to this function. Okay, the fun proper function that an, uh, that an association has. Okay, to help the participation participants in an association to help themselves. Okay, that's the idea of you know. Uh, subsidiarity and that's the idea that transpires into idea of common good okay so when we talk about common good you essentially let the individual uh, you know the community has to let the individual to pursue his or her own uh, you know personal development okay that's the idea of common good so he says that the common good of a political community is the securing of the end uh, of the ensemble of material and other conditions which tend to favor that object okay and which object is that it is that you pursue your own personal development so this is essentially what he is trying to do that whenever we do utilitarian calculation we are willing to sacrifice concerns of minorities we are willing to sacrifice concerns of individuals okay we do not do that okay so uh, and how do we avoid doing that if you follow his philosophy now whether you subscribe to it or not is a different question but he gives you a philosophy that says that we do not sacrifice you know rights uh, of individuals okay or even of a minority so yes uh, that's essentially the idea is okay now from here if you were to arrive at a, a moral decision that you do by applying the principles of practicable reasonableness to individual cases okay and if you do that then you come to right conclusion about uh, moral questions okay so I hope this much is clear okay um, now um, another important thing that remains to be discussed here is uh, uh, the basic goods the objective goods themselves okay one objective good you know that has raised quite a lot of you know uh, you know confusion for us uh, you know not confusion problems for us is the objective good of life okay this has led to many controversies okay so for Finnis uh, life in itself is an objective good isn't it okay so it is something that is to be pursued okay what does that entail that you cannot kill someone so murder is obviously wrong okay you ought not to kill someone because life is an objective good uh, so what about abortion then <laughs> okay is abortion justified what about euthanasia okay is it okay for a doc doctor to administer, uh, you know, some, you know, agent to the human body so as to, you know, relieve a person of the kind of pain that he or she is suffering because of certain, you know, uh, disease that you cannot fix, that one will not get, uh, will recover from, okay? But that person is constantly under pain. So will it be justifiable on the part of a doctor to administer some medicine, some, some uh, you know, component to terminate the life of such a person or for that matter if one person is uh, on life sustaining drug or other you know uh, you know chemicals or some uh, you know intro you know food delivered you know uh, uh, through you know uh, intravenous uh, you know method will it be okay for a doctor to withdraw that okay and the third question is is it justifiable for you to take your own life is suicide ever justifiable okay so uh, our, our philosopher here says that life is an objective good. So what do you think will be answer to all these questions, okay, all these moral problems that we have faced here, according to our philosopher here, Finis. Will he be okay with all these three? Euthanasia, suicide, and what was the other one? Abortion. Yes, abortion. So will our philosophy, philosopher be cool with that? What do you think? Come on, speak. So I think he will be cool with that. Uh, why do you think so? So because uh, the, uh, one of the seven objective goods that is practical reasonableness. Huh. That justify it. Okay, so here's the thing. Very, very good thing. Okay. See, if you remember, uh, principles of practical reasonableness says that we will not arbitrarily prefer one if you remember our discussion from yesterday, we will not arbitrarily prefer one, you know, objective good over another, okay? 
all objective goods are uh, incommensurable okay you cannot compare one with the other okay you cannot weigh one in terms of the other so one objective good will never be reason enough uh, to avoid another to negate another so one objective good will not negate another got the idea so you're if you're saying that practical reasonableness is one of the objective goods that will trump that will supersede life which is another you know uh, objective good that's not allowed because every objective moral uh, objective good is to be pursued they are all equally good objectively good so you have tried well here that's very appreciable but uh Finnis would not accept that so remember th wh what is the reason that Finnis wouldn't accept that sumit if you have understood what i just tried to explain to you Sir, from the nine, uh, you when you broke down the practical reason, uh, reasonableness, then one thing I noted was you naturally have to prioritize certain goods over others. Okay. So you have to uh, when you are accepting one, you have to ignore ignore the other. Uh, yes, yes. Listen so, to this. Okay. When you pursue your project, it is not possible to for you to pursue projects in terms of all the objective goods. You cannot do that. However, that does not mean that you do not respect objective goods. Okay. The objective good that you were born with is life. So you do not have a choice in that. You have to respect it. Okay. But whether you choose aesthetic experience or play or something else, you have a choice in that. But you do not have a choice when it comes to life. Okay. So our philosopher says that, no, it is never justifiable for any of these things to happen. Okay. So euthanasia is not justifiable. Abortion in no case is justifiable. So will it not be cool for, you know, okay for Finnis, for anyone to uh, kill himself or herself, okay? So suicide is not justifiable. But that seems to be problematic. Does it seem problematic to you? Do you think the, you know, the conclusion that we arrive at based on, you know, based on application of this philosophy that Finnis is talking about uh, is okay? Or do you think it's not okay? Someone who is in tremendous pain, okay? Uh, but bedridden, cannot even move, okay? Uh, it seems that the best thing that you can do to that person is to relieve that person of that pain. And how do you do that? Maybe the only way that you do that is by, you know, ending that person's life, okay? You, you walk uh, on the street, there's a dog which is in enormous pain, maybe it has just, okay, that's what, you know, our country is like, okay? Um, it, it has been hit by a car. It's an enormous pain, okay? But um, Finnish says that you cannot do anything about it. It has to, it has, life is something to be, you know, respected. You cannot do anything about it. So you say that I think I have to reduce the pain, okay? If I reduce the pain, there'll be increase in happiness, okay? Pleasure for the dog, okay? Pleasure in terms of not feeling pain, okay? When you say something like that, what kind of reasoning is yours? So let, let us take the case of a person who is bedridden, okay? Someone who is bedridden, someone who is in tremendous pain, so feeling pain, okay? It's, that person is definitely not feeling pleasure, okay? So we are saying that we ought to end the life of that person so as to relieve that person uh, of the pain that he is suffering, okay? What kind of reasoning am I giving to you? Sir, excuse yes. me, sir. Yes, yes. So I'm getting confused here. So according to John Finnis, any action you are pursuing, mm -hmm. that should be uh, driven by uh, so, uh, the seven goods and nine requirements. Yes, yes. So and uh, one of the seven goods is uh, so uh, practical reasonableness. Mm -hmm. And so and one of the nine requirements is that so if you are doing something, it should be in utilitarian sense. No, no, no. Yesterday, that's what I tried to explain to you. Your calculation has to be within, after you have chosen the objective goods, okay? The efficiency within reason is one of the, you know, rules of practicable, principles of practical cable reasonableness, okay? That efficiency in reasoning happens once the objective good has already been chosen, okay? So, life is already an objective good which you have. So, you do not have a choice in that. After that, you have to do your practical, uh, you know, your okay. hedonistic calculation, okay? That efficiency reason. You cannot use that efficiency argument to negate objective goods. That is not allowable. Okay. That's as, it's as simple as that. 
Now coming back to the example that I was giving you, that someone is bedridden, someone is feeling tremendous pain, okay? Uh, only way we can help, help that person is by terminating that person's life, okay? What kind of reasoning am I giving to you here? Come on, it's very simple. What kind of reasoning is that? I'm saying that I'm trying to reduce pain and incre increase pleasure. What kind of reason reasoning is that? Yes, Ashu. Ashu Rawal. What kind of reasoning is that? Make a guess. We discussed only two. It has to be one of the two. <laughs> Sir, at the end of it, what are you doing is... Okay, uh, wait, wait. Sorry. Sumit, Sumit, wait. Let me also deal with others. Robin! No, 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 not, not one of that. <laughs> Sorry, Jairaz, it's not one of that, okay. So, what kind of reasoning says that we ought to increase happiness and, you know, decrease pain? Utilitarianism. Yeah, consequentialism. That's what I mean. Yeah, utilitarianism is consequentialism. I told you guys a little while ago. So, that's the kind of reasoning that I'm suggesting that, you know, euthanasia should be allowed, okay, or for that matter, abortion should be allowed. The same is also a consequentialist argument. Why? I'm saying that, okay, the mother's life, the mother's, you know, life, the mother's, uh, you know, freedom, so you can all, you know, you can equate it with some kind of pleasure, means more than something else, okay, uh, than the pleasure of some entity that does not even exist yet, okay, in the human form, okay. Even in that, I'm doing consequentialist, uh, you know, calculation. When I say that I ought not to kill myself, okay, or I want to kill myself, I want to kill myself because I can no longer take the pain of existence, okay, I hate being, you know, there, or I hate existence, and I hate being, you know, treated like, uh, you know, uh, I can't utter those words, okay, uh, but I hate, you know, going through all those pains, okay, so I want to end my life, okay, so... Any, if your argument is of this sort, your argument is consequentialist in, na in nature. But Finnis will not be cool or okay with such, a, such an argument. So Finnis will say that your argument has to be based on one of those objective goods. And the first objective good that he's referring to is life. life. So in all these three cases, you are not cool. You, it's not okay for you to uh, uh, end someone's life. Abortion is not okay, nor is it okay for you to... Uh, terminate your own life. So that's the problem that we come to, okay? If we apply Finnis's, uh, you know, objective goods and his idea of practicable reasonableness. So yes, his philosophy seems very exciting, interesting, in the sense that we can argue in favor of individual liberties, okay? Uh, in favor of minorities' rights, but at the same time, see, the same can come back and bite our, <laughs> bite us back, okay? So uh, that's what happens. Now, would consequentialism be of any help then, okay? We will look at that later on when we take up utilitarianism if we have time, okay? But now, see, difficulty is that I still have one topic that's left and I'm already past the, you know, time. It's already 11.48. So, we'll look at the principle of lex injusta non est lex in the next class and we will also start, start legal positivism. So, kindly go back and read John Austin on legal positivism. We will discuss that in the next class on Monday. So, if you have any confusions, you guys can drop your, you know, messages here.